Okay, guys. So let's go ahead and continue uh, building out this uh, form, uh, this food item. The first thing I want to do is add an event listener and handler for the on submit, and we have to find a form over here. Okay, and it already has the event listener, the on submit, and or I'm just going to change this name here. I'm going to call it handle product submit all right and i'm going to start creating this handle product submit i'm going to put it right over here const handle product product submit gets the event object and then like all the submissions we prevent the default behavior so event prevent default and let me go here and just mark this off because we added the event listener and handler and now we're we're moving okay well we're not there yet or actually yeah we are there now so now the next process is uh, we want to add some client-side validation uh, for these form um, fields. So over here, inside the handle product submit, right after the prevent default, we can start by doing let's 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 work our way from the top uh, from the very top to the bottom. So I'm gonna start with this file, and the way we can test that out is I'm gonna do if if product image remember product image is the name of the property state property here product image initially we set it to null so i can test to see if it's still null because if it's still null then that means it uh an image hasn't been uploaded so going back down here okay so if product image is equivalent to null then then I want to do set error message to please select an image okay just like that we can go ahead and test that out over here Right now, I haven't selected any image, right? So if I press submit, look over here. Please select an image. I can do it again, please select an image. And the moment I do upload an image from my file system, open, there we go, and then submit, nothing appears. The error message is not there. So that's working. All right, so let's continue on. All right, over here. All right, so continue on with the validation. So else if, else if, let's see, what are the next input fields here? We got name, description, and price. All right, so I'm gonna do if product name, oh, actually, no, I'm gonna make use of this library here. Uh, we already have it imported and it's from the valid uh, from the validator um, library and this is the method I want to make use of is empty so I can use that over here and say if is else if is empty and then product name or is empty product description or is empty product uh, product price then do something and I want to set the error message to input 
Uh, what is it? All input, no. All fields are required. Save that. Okay, so going here, testing it out. Let's select an image. Okay, and then here, I don't have anything inside these fields. So if I submit, all fields are required. I'm going to say, um, okay, say, okay, fettuccine, subscription, Italy, Italy. Okay, and then I submit, but still I have this input field empty, so I should still see it. There we go. All right, and then the price, I'll do $15. Um, and then submit, and nothing appears. Good. All right, so the purpose of that all fields, uh, um, that last error message was for these three input fields. But the, uh, we're going to handle these two, the rest of these, uh, right now. And the way I'm going to do that is um, I'm going to do else if is empty because I want to display a different error message from this one here. All fields are required for the other ones. So I want to do if is empty uh, product uh, product category then set error message set error message to please so please select a category and then the same thing here for the for the last one which is if is empty if is empty product product quantity set error message to please select a quantity okay and then finally in the else block if everything succeeds success success then um, that's where everything else is going to be handled there all right so let's go ahead and test these other validations all right, let's go ahead and select our image. Input fields, fettuccine, Italy, price 15. And then now I don't have it, I haven't selected any category. So I should get an error here for select category. Yep, please select a category. All right, good. So I'll select a category. All right, well, I have to refresh the page because every time I make a change here, for some reason I have to go here and uh, refresh. All right, so the same thing here. Let's do that one more time. Image, fettuccine, blah, blah, blah. Price 15. All right, um, please select the category. Okay, so now select, and it's part of the process category. And then if I, so, if I submit, I should get an error now for this quantity, right? Because I haven't selected anything. And there you go. Please select a quantity. All right. And then the moment I do select a quantity, uh, say 10, and submit, I should not get an error. There you go. I'm submitting, but no error. All right. So that handles our client side validation. Now let's prep the form data object. All right. So here, finally, in the success block, let's start working on that. So the first thing is we want to start prepping our the the state data that the user has uh, from the user's input fields to, to to send off to the server. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to do let form data equals new form data data uh, data. Oh, actually it's like that there we go all right now this form data it's a built-in function uh, for our browsers and uh, let me go ahead and show you here uh, let me do uh, HTML yeah HTML form data 
All right, you see form data data. All right, there you go. Form data interface provides a way to easily construct a set of key value pairs representing form fields and their values. All right, so this is a built-in function for our uh, for our browsers. So I'm going to make use of that. Let's go here. All right, so new form data. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. Right? Yeah, form data. All right. All right, there we go. So now we um, once we init instantiate this form object. There's methods built into this, uh, 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 built in uh, that we can make use of for this object. And one of them is the append. So I can do append like this. And for the first value, we have two um, input fields. The first one is the, key, is the name of the, the name field. And then the second one is the value. So the first one, I want to give, uh, start filling in all of our state data. So I'm going to do sort of product image, OK? And there you, have, you must put them in strings, product data. And then the value is going to be the product data that's in the state. Oh, no, no what am I doing? No, not product data. I mean, product image, and then product image. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this here paste this a few times all right so the second one was product name product name the second was description this description and then there was price Category. Category. And then the final one was for the quantity. Okay. All right. So now we have everything. Now, this, the last thing is let's see. We are going to call an API function that we haven't created yet, but I will create, and I will call that create 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 product. And as an argument, I'm going to pass in the form data. Okay, save that, and I will be creating my. I will go into the AP, over here for the API folder. I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it product.js just like that. And I'm going to call this, let's see, I'm going to do export const and we called it, um, what was it? Create, create product create product okay just start off like that for now and then go back here in the admin dashboard and I'm gonna copy this import statement here and paste it right below and change this from API category to API product and then the function I want to destructure from there is was called create product Okay, so now I can make use of that function inside of here. And now let's go ahead and build this function, this API function. But first, because I'm going to be making use of Axios, I got to make, uh, I got to import it. So import Axios from Axios. And this will be an asynchronous function. So do async, and then we're getting the form data or the data. And the first thing we want to do is let's see we're going to start our request here and I'm going to store response create a variable called response and I'm doing wait axios 
Axios post is going to be a post method and then give the route to the backend API and it is going to be API product and then the data, pass in the data. And then finally, we want to return the response from the server to where the fun this function was uh, first called from, which was here in the admin dashboard inside right over here okay so that response from the server is going to return back here and because we're using axios we can use dot then and catch and for the for the then we're gonna if if everything goes well we're gonna get the response from the server and i'm gonna do console log server uh, server response server response and then response and then if we get an error do console log error okay all right so we prepped the form data object and we created we created the create product api function All right, so that should be it for now. Um, but uh, we, at this point here, the create product API function, this, at this point right here, this is where the, the process of moving away from the client side to the back end starts, okay? Because here, this is where um, I'm starting to uh, push the data from the form all the way to the server, okay? So that is it for now. So in the next lecture, we'll, we'll continue on and starting on the server side, all right?